in the situation where you just are guessing on most of the variables because you can't really know them, what are the odds that it's going to predict the future? Zero. It can't do that. That's not a thing. If it hit the future, it would only be an accident, which could happen. I mean, it could accidentally predict the future, but it couldn't do it intentionally. It's not for that, and you don't even use them for that. They're only for these things. They can size your risk. So you try a bunch of variables and you say, well, if these variables are here, oh, that's not so bad. Let's try it again. These variables are here. Ah, that's not too bad. Let's try a little tweaking of the variables again. Oh, my God. If I tweak those variables this way, it's the end of the world. I better run that again. Uh-oh. There's a whole bunch of situations that are the end of the world. You could just tweak different variables and get there. So that's how you use a complicated model to size the risk. It's not telling you what the risk is. It's not predicting the risk. You can't do that. You can't predict the future with that many variables. It's simply telling it's, it's this big. We think this model sizes the risk. So that's what the expert says. And the expert tells, let's say, you know, a low-level uh, person in the government. The person in the government takes the, takes the graph that came with all of that hedging and takes it to his boss or her boss and says, we've got a problem here, look at this graph. It looks like, it looks like you know, something terrible is going to happen. And, and all of the hedging will be gone by then. Because as soon as the graph gets into the wild, all of the, well, we're guessing on this, it could be this, we ran a lot of models, we had to throw 10 models out, we think we feel pretty good about this. It turns out that a complicated model is usually just the expert opinion consensus hammered into a model so that they can communicate it. But what they're communicating is just the, the bulk of all their testing and things that are hard to explain. So, I wanted to talk to you about models, because I've been explaining this on social media until my face is blue. And this is the thing that people didn't understand until maybe um, this month. <laughs> so, I used to do a lot of prediction models for a living back in my banking days and my phone company days. That's what I did. So, I would, you know, do these complicated many variable models just on, usually just on... Uh, uh, spreadsheets, uh, but it had lots of variables and stuff. So I learned firsthand that they're never accurate, but sometimes you can find a range of your risk. So this is the thing that people learn today. If it's a complicated model, which is different than something simple, a simple model, that could work. If you have a really simple model that says, oh, every, every year for the last 30 years we went up 5%, so we predict next year we'll go up 5%. I mean, if it's really simple, sure, it might work. But as soon as you get a bunch of variables, such as we had with the coronavirus, and here's the, the fun part. We didn't know any of the variables accurately. And we knew we didn't know them accurately. So we were guessing about the lethality. The lethality. We were guessing about which variables really you know, made a difference. We thought that smoking made it worse, but maybe it makes it better. We thought it was something about, I don't know, humidity and density and something, you know, age, and then maybe it wasn't, and maybe it's in the blood. So we had these intense unknowns. And then on top of that, nobody really knew how well we would do social distancing. Nobody really knew how well it would work because it had never been done on this scale. Nobody, nobody really knew how well the masks would work. Nobody really knew any of that. So here was this complicated model with, I don't know how many variables, but it had to be at least dozens, maybe hundreds. And here's the thing. They didn't know any of them. It's not as if they had a few assumptions, but the rest of them were you know, pretty good estimates. They didn't know any of them. And they knew they didn't know them because they knew that you know, the information was evolving even as they watched. So in the situation where you just are guessing on most of the variables because you can't really know them, what are the odds that it's going to predict the future? Zero. It can't do that. That's not a thing. 
If it hit the future, it would only be an accident, which could happen. I mean, it could accidentally predict the future, but it couldn't do it intentionally. It's not for that, and you don't even use them for that. They're only for these things. They can size your risk. So you try a bunch of variables, and you say, well, if these variables are here, oh, that's not so bad. Let's try it again. These variables are here. Nah, that's not too bad. Let's try a little tweaking of the variables again. Oh, my God. If I tweak those variables this way, it's the end of the world. I better run that again. Uh-oh. There's a whole bunch of situations that are the end of the world. You could just tweak different variables and get there. So that's how you use a complicated model to size the risk. It's not telling you what the risk is. It's not predicting the risk. You can't do that. You can't predict the future with that many variables. It's simply telling it's, it's this big. Now, here's the key part that everybody gets wrong. If it's sizing it this big and it turns out that it's just beyond it, was the model wrong? No, that's the part everybody gets wrong. If it's just outside of that big range that it said it's going to be almost certainly in this range, and it's just outside, which 60,000 deaths is really just outside of 100,000, if you're looking at 100,000 to a million or two, that range, that's actually a bullseye. You know, it's about as good as you can do. And, of course, the models are used to persuade because the scientists, the experts, have a hard time communicating So the, because the complexity of what they know can't really be communicated. So they need a simplified way to tell the people who are not experts, here it is. And here's how it usually goes in an in a, uh, exaggerated form. The scientists will say, all right, here's this model. But I have to tell you, we have a lot of just estimates. There's so many variables. I mean, it's, you know, there's just no way to know what the actual answer is. But it was somewhere in this general area. We think this model sizes the risk. So that's what the expert says. And the expert tells, let's say, you know, a low-level uh, person in the government. The person in the government takes the, takes the graph that came with all of that hedging and takes it to his boss or her boss and says, we've got a problem here, look at this graph. It looks like, it looks like you know, something terrible is going to happen. And, and all of the hedging will be gone by then. Because as soon as the graph gets into the wild, all of the, well, we're guessing on this, it could be this, we ran a lot of models, we had to throw 10 models out, we think we feel pretty good about this. It turns out that a complicated model is usually just the expert opinion consensus hammered into a model so that they can communicate it. But what they're communicating is just the, the bulk of all their testing and things that are hard to explain. It, the only way they can explain it is say, look at this pretty picture. Hey, hey, look at this. See that graph goes up. Do you see? It goes up. That's all you need to know. Look, graph goes up. Goes up. Remember that. I don't want to overwhelm you. So, when people got mad because they said, hey, we thought those predictions were going to be accurate, or at least far more accurate, and now we're disappointed and now all the experts are liars and idiots. To which I say, well, you only had yourself to blame. And now that you know that complex models of that type are not even intended to predict the future, they don't have that it's not even an option. Now that you know that, you have advanced to the next level. So in this simulation game, your challenge was to understand this. And now that you do, you may advance to the next level. Experts with complicated graphs are trying to persuade you. Now that doesn't mean they're wrong, and it doesn't mean they're dishonest. It only means the only way they can communicate their awesome intelligence, which could be right, could be wrong, but it's still awesome intelligence. The only way they can communicate it is by lying with a little graph, if you know what I mean. It's the only way you can get from here to there. So if you, if you're, if you feel like you want to blame the experts for lying to you, give them a little credit. It's the only way they can communicate with people who don't know what they know, haven't seen what they've seen, haven't, haven't you know, lived and breathed the full you know, scope of the thing. 
So they can be pretty sure that there's a big problem ahead, but they might need a little, little bit of a lie, a little bit of a graph that's a little too neat to sell it to the public. So once you know that, you go to the next level, congratulations, you've gone to the next level. And by the time we get out of this coronavirus situation, I expect you will have advanced several levels up in awareness in the simulation. Congratulations.